Hi everyone, I'm Shannon and welcome to today's video. Today we are going over the best and worst rooms at Disney's Coronado Springs Resort. I was originally going to split this up with the, the original Coronado Springs Resort and Grand Destino, but I did decide to combine them because Grand Destino actually was fairly simple to kind of go over and we'll, I'll explain that in a little bit. But um, with that, a uh, little history about Disney's Coronado Springs. It is a moderate resort, obviously, and it opened in August 1st, 1997. It's also the only Disney's moderate resort that has, sorry, that's my dog. <laughs> it is the only moderate resort that has a convention center. So sometimes when you're staying there, when you know conventions happen again, you might see some business people. I've actually attended a couple conventions there. Um, so it's kind of weird seeing people going to Disney World and you're going to go work, but um, it is a convention hotel. And it also is the only um, moderate resort that has a fitness center and a pretty nice one at that. So if you are in the moderate budget range, but you wanna be able to work out a little bit on vacation, then definitely choose Coronado Springs and it's by building four. We'll, get over, we'll go over that in a little bit. Um, so again, I'm gonna go over all the different categories for Disney's Coronado Springs. There are a lot. So we're gonna get into this. This is probably gonna be one of the longer moderate videos um, for best and worst rooms. Again, with, um, with the moderate resorts and with the Disney Walt Disney World hotel side, we don't really see too many um, kind of you know unicorn rooms. There's not a corner room that's oddly shaped. Um, there is a little bit difference in Coronado uh, in the Grandestino. We're in the deluxe suite. There's two versions of the suite, and I'll go over that in a little bit, um, and I'll show some pictures of that as well. But um, for the most part, the rooms are generally the same. So just like with the other moderates and the other values, you're really looking at location. What location is most convenient for you? It is, there are, um, the regular Coronado Springs is external entry. So you're gonna be entering obviously through the outside. So I don't think you're really, it's not like you're gonna go out in your balcony. I don't think the view matters as much for an external entry room. Now in Grand Destino, that's a different story because you have standard and the standard view Views are the ones that have the fireworks whenever fireworks return and then the water view overlooks you know Coronado Springs and it's an absolutely beautiful view so if I were booking it right now I would definitely book preferred because there's no fireworks so there's nothing to see you're just gonna look up ever a, a, a parking lot but during um, you know when things start to return to normal and fireworks return then maybe standard would be the way to go because you would have those fireworks views. But let's get into the best and worst rooms at uh, Coronado Springs. Um, and be actually, before that, let's go over the different room categories. Okay, so let's get into the different categories of all the different rooms at the original uh, portion of the resort at Coronado Springs. So you have standard view, um, then you also have king bed. And king bed, when it says that, it actually means standard uh, view king bed but it just says king bed, keep that in mind. Then you have water view, then you have water view king bed, then you have preferred, and then you have preferred king bed. So basically it's three different sections or standard water view and uh, preferred, and then you have the option of two queen beds or a king bed. But just know that if you want a king bed, it is a separate category. And if you book the category that just says king bed, that is a standard view, keep that in mind. Moving on, they do have, um, in the Casitas area, they do have some suites, and there's a one-bedroom suite. There is a one-bedroom suite um, king, and that one sleeps four. The one-bedroom sleep suite sleeps six. And then there's the Casitas executive suite, and that sleeps eight. And then there's a junior suite. And those are all, I believe, in building one, right near the convention center. And I think those were the original kind of rooms built for the executives that were attending conventions, but then they eventually built Grand Destino Tower. Now in Grand Destino Tower, there's quite a bit. So let's go over. There is Standard View, Standard View King, Water View, Water View King, the Deluxe Suite, and the Deluxe Suite was what I just mentioned, that there's two different layouts. There's one that's an L and there's one that's kind of a pentagon maybe? I don't know, it's, it's oddly shaped. And then there's a one bedroom suite and then the presidential suite. So I'm gonna go over all of those um, right now and go over which ones are the best and worst rooms at Disney's Coronado Springs Resort. 
So we're going to start off with touringplans.com's page dedicated to Disney's Coronado Springs Resort. And as always, all the information you need to find about Coronado Springs can be found on this page. So you can just learn about the check-in services. There's the Grand Destino Tower, where to check in, where to get your theme park tickets. There's some great pictures. There's some links to some of the room tours, both at the regular Coronado Springs, as well as the Grand Destino Tower, and just pretty much all the information you need to learn about Disney's Coronado Springs can be found here. So here we have the overview of Coronado Springs Resort, and I want to give a shout out to Jeremy Stein of Main Street Magic. I'm going to post a link below to his podcast. Uh, He gave me a lot of insight on Coronado Springs, his family. This is their favorite resort, and they stayed here quite a bit. My family hasn't stayed here in five years, so thanks again, Jeremy, for all your insight. So as you'll see, we obviously have a Grand Destino. We'll talk about Grand Destino at the end, but if you look at the rest of Coronado Springs and what I call basically the legacy Coronado Springs Resort. There's three areas. You have casitas, ranchos, and cabanas. So with that, um, you'll see right here that there is a pool in each of these areas. And then you have the main pool. So the main pool is closest to, I would say, between ranchos and cabanas. And then you have a quiet pool in each of those. There is no separate pool for Grand Estino, but you have the pool right at cabanas and then obviously the dig site. Right over here at the building four is also a fitness center. So Coronado Springs is the only moderate resort that does have a fitness center. So if you are someone who wants to work out on vacation, then you would probably want to be in the Casitas area. And then this building, these buildings over here, one, two, and three are usually preferred. And that's because as you'll see, this is the convention center. So uh, this is where you're going to find all the suites on the Um, hotel side for the legacy resort and then obviously here you have an arcade you'll have a playground and obviously that's where the pool with the slide is this is three bridges right here and um, so that gives you an overview of Disney's Coronado Springs Resort so now let's get into the room categories real quick before we start we'll look at the bus route the bus route starts at Casitas then goes to Rancho's cabanas and then ends at Grand Destino. So if that makes a difference to you as far as where the bus route is, personally, we always like to be on one of the latter bus stops because then you don't have to go the entire resort. However, you do run the risk of not being able to get on the bus or it being full by the time it gets to your stop. So just keep that in mind. But let's start with standard view. And I'm not going to go over the different There's obviously their standard view and then there's king bed. I'm not going to go over the two different um, categories because it's pretty much the same. What we're looking at is the area. There are no unicorn rooms that are special rooms because they're odd shaped and there are no really bad rooms that I could find. So we're really just focusing on the different areas. So here you'll see the standard. As I mentioned, one, two, and three are the preferred. So we'll go over that at the end. Obviously, you have Grand Estino here. So it really depends on what you're looking for. What uh, Jeremy mentioned was that a lot of people prefer cabanas because it's close to Grand Estino. It's close to the pool. So you really are getting the best of both worlds. You're the third bus stop. So you're not the last bus stop, but you're also not the first. And then you're somewhere in, you're really close to the pool. So obviously, if you are in 8B, you're going to be between the pool and the Grand Estino Tower, the lobby, and everything there. Obviously, these are preferred because these are closest to the convention center. You have the food court is right around here. And then also, um, so four and five are in that Casitas area, but aren't considered preferred. And you have the pool and the gym right here. Now, I will say... These bridges, these three bridges, and that's the Three Bridges restaurant, that has changed everything because if you are at five right here, you can literally just walk out your room and go straight down. And he did mention that the ranchos is that is probably the least desirable, that he really doesn't know anybody that prefers ranchos. And I would say 6A or 7A are probably the least desirable of the buildings just because there's just they're really far out there unless you're going to be taking your car a lot and you just want to be out and you don't plan on going to the lobby 
you know, Ranchos is probably the area that you don't want to request. So I'm going to click into five. So if I were staying here, we would probably request five. Now, obviously these are going to be water view and we would request five. And you can see here, um, it's a really nice view, nothing, nothing special, but this is why I would request the uh, building number five. And we're going to go back to the resort map. If you look right here, we would be right here where I clicked was right there. And you have the gym is right here. You got a pool right there. But if we wanted to get to the lobby, we would just walk outside, come down, go right down to here. If we wanted to go to the pool, we would walk to and just cross there. Really close proximity to everything without having to walk all around. So to, for us and for our family, building five would be the most desirable because it's so close to the gym and you have easy access via the bridges. Now, if you wanted to go on the opposite end and you, and also we would be the first bus stop. So we would have to go all the way around, but we would always be in hopefully guaranteed a seat. Now on this side, you have uh, cabanas as well. So if you want to be, let's say you're going to be spending a lot of time at the pool, then 8A is where it's at. And let's just click here. And I think you could probably see, I don't know if you can see the pool here. No, you can't. But this would be 8A um, would probably be a great building to be at. If you wanted to be close to the pool, that room right there would be very, very close to the pool. Let's see on this side. Um, let's click on this side real quick. I don't know if you're going to be able to see. Yeah, so you can see and the pool is going to be right over here. So it's really a great area um, if you're going to be having a pool intensive trip. However, if it were us, we were looking at either, we were booked either in a standard view or a king bedroom, we would request building five and then secondly, four. However, if you want to spend a lot of time at the pool, I would request um, building 8A. Or if you just want to be very, very close to the tower and not have to pay preferred, then I would request 8C. So those are my recommendations for standard view or a king bed category. So next up, we're going to go into the water view two, two queen beds category. Again, there's water view and then there's water view king. Same buildings are going to come up and these are the buildings. So as you can see, it's almost all of the same buildings with the exception of 7A. 7A is completely standard. And again, that's probably one of the least desirable buildings anyway. So the same applies. If you are going to be going to the gym um, or you want uh, easy access to pretty much everything, I think the most central is probably building five. If you're going to be close to the pool and you're going to be spending a lot of time at the pool, then I would request building 8A. And to be honest, I would say this room right here uh, which would give you really close that staircase is probably leading to the pool right there. And, and if you just want to be close to Grandestino, then 8C would be where I would request. So the same applies. It's just a matter of the room will have somewhat of a water view. I will say I don't think that a view category like such as a water view category is desirable or worth the money in a value or a moderate because you are talking about external entry rooms. So to open your blinds, you have people coming in, you just, people can see, you're not looking at a balcony. So I think paying for a view in a value or a moderate that has external entry is just not worth it in my opinion. Some people dis disagree and then it might be the only category that's available. So, um, but if you do, obviously, I think I would focus more on location rather than view. So now we're going into the preferred category. Again, there's preferred and then two queens and one king. They are all in this section. So one, two, and three. One is I primarily the suites, but let's look into um, where we would go. So I would obviously recommend going into building one. It's going to give you the closest to the main area. This is obviously where the suites are, so they're probably the most desirable. So I would, you know, any of these buildings, but if I were to request a preferred view, then I would request building one, because if you are booking a preferred view, you want a, a room that is going to be close to everything as possible. So I think you could request building one or even building three, because three, I think two is probably the least desirable because there's really not, unless again, you want to be close to the gym and then the gym is right there. 
But three, if you look at three, um, you know, some of these even have some water views. So you have that. So three is also good. I would say if it were me and I was booked in a preferred room or a preferred king, I would request building one first and three as a secondary. And then obviously, as I've mentioned before, we always request ground floor. So I think ground floor for us would take precedence. So I think if you prefer an upper floor room and that's you prefer that rather than which building you're going to be in, make sure you just note that when you make your room request. And I'll go over that at the end. So now let's get into the suites at the Legacy Coronado Springs. And we're first gonna start with junior suites. And as you can see, junior suites are in buildings one and three. So let's start, first take a look at building one. So here you have them. There's that, where the major suites, I believe that's the executive suite right there. So they're here. So one is in right in the courtyard, not necessarily the best view. Um, a lot of trees, so the room would probably be fairly dark. Now that's building one. Where I would go back is to building three. And this is where I would definitely request building three if you were in a junior suite. So this is the area that is closest to the walkway. And I'll show you that when we look at the big map. But look at this, it's right on the water. It's gonna be right next to the sidewalk. Very, very easy access, great location. So let's just look back at the entire map. And that room is going to be right here. So you just really can't get a better central location, very close to El Centro. You'd be very close to the market to be able to go to the food court, fairly good walking distance to um, to Grandestino, and then also fairly good walking distance to the bridge to, br to bring you to three bridges or to bring you to the pool. So I think that, that building three would be where I would request if I were booked in a junior suite. So now we're gonna look at the one bedroom category. And as you can see, all the one bedrooms are in building one. So let's look and we're gonna click over here. And on the first floor, there's only, actually they start on the second floor. If you notice right here, they start on the second floor. And this is in the little atrium area. And I believe as you go up, there are, so let's go up to building four or floor four. And there's one right here. This would probably give you a better access and definitely a better view. But remember you do, as you can see, there's a hallway. So this is your view outside the balcony. That's not a private balcony. This is just the walkway. So, um, and then if we go down to build to floor three, I believe there's two. So you have those choices. So there's only four rooms. I don't think you can go wrong. I think it just depends on, I think if you're going to be you can't be on the ground floor, then you probably want to be on the highest floor because at that point, what's the difference really? But I think you really can't go wrong and there's only four to choose from. And finally, we're going to look at the executive suite. Again, executive suites are all in building one. There is one on the first floor. And obviously if we were lucky enough to be booked in a executive suite, this would be the one we would want right on the walkway, very, very easy access to everything. However, if you go up to the fourth floor, there are actually two. And my computer's just taking a little bit. Yeah, there we go. So same line. The fourth floor is the only one that has this room right here. Not the best view, not very desirable. But again, if you are in an executive suite, I don't think you really care so much about the view because um, it's not like you have a balcony. Floors two and three just have this one right here. Again, with an executive suite, there's really can't go wrong. They're all proximity. You're gonna be right in this area right here. That one on the fourth floor would be right here. So again, I think any of them, you really can't go wrong, especially if you're an executive suite. So now we're going to get into the Grand Destino Tower. So let's click in here. I have Grand Destino Standard View, two queen beds. Again, I'm not gonna go over the difference between the standard two queen and standard one king because they're pretty much is just about location. And again, I haven't heard of any necessarily bad rooms, but I would say rule of thumb for Grand Destino is the higher, the better. And let me show you why, because here is a picture. Let's look at a picture of the tower. This is from the Touring Plans blog. So if you can see here, you have the Port Cachere and you have part like a roof here. So anytime you go, if you are on the fourth floor, and I do know someone that was on the fourth floor right around here, they overlooked the Port Cochere. So the windows were just very dark. It was very dark in there. 
while they, it was a standard view, it was a parking lot view, just very, you know, to look over the roof of something wasn't very appealing. So I think with Grandis, you know, the rule of thumb is the higher, the better, but let's go over the specifics. So standard view, as you can see, is the front or the sides of the resort. And they start on floor three. And um, the thing with the standard view is when re fireworks return, the standard view is where you're gonna be able to see fireworks. Otherwise, let's go up to floor 12. Let's see if we can find a room that has a, um, well, this is a nearby room. So you're looking in the parking lot, but as you can see, you can see, um, Hollywood Tower of Terror in the distance, and that's where you would be able to see fireworks. Right now, it's just a parking lot view, but obviously you're going to save money by booking a standard view. So keep that in mind that standard view are all on the Port Cashier side or the parking lot side. And then if you go to the sides, let's see if we can go to the sides here. And now you could probably request some of these side rooms here. If you don't really care about fireworks, you could get a partial um, a partial water view without having to pay for it. So that's another option too. If fireworks aren't important for you, then I would request this side right here, which is close to the water. So it would be rooms, um, 81, 79, 77, 75, or 73. So those are the five rooms that I would recommend if you're standard and you don't care about fireworks or fireworks haven't returned yet, then these are the rooms I would recommend with 81, the 81 line being the one I would recommend the most because it's gonna be closest to the water without having to pay for that water view. Again, the higher the better, and I believe, I'm not sure if it goes up to 14, let's see, maybe 12, nope, and Nope, it goes up to, nope, let's see, nine. There we go. So it goes up to nine. And then obviously these rooms on the side. So if you're requesting a standard, I would um, request some of these sides. Unless you are looking for a fireworks view, then you probably want to be on the front of the tower. And now we're going to go over water view. Again, water view. And there's a water view, two queen beds, and then king bed. They're all pretty much the same. It's talking about the view. And so obviously these are on the side of facing the resort. Unless you wanna to be towards the lower lobby and you don't care about the view, um, then maybe the third floor would be ideal for you. But I do think the rule of thumb is, is if you are booking a, um, a, a water view, you want that water view. So I think anything you're really not going to go wrong. It just depends on whether or not you want to be close to the elevator. And that is, I will say, that is a spectacular view. You have a view of three bridges. As you can see, there's the bridges, and that would be where that, that room is that I was mentioning as a standard. You have the bridges here. You can overlook the pool. See this little bridge right here. It's just a gorgeous view. So I would recommend being requesting the 14th floor. The 15th floor is going to be club, the 14th floor or as high as possible. And I really wouldn't worry about the which location. Um, the elevators aren't too far from any of the rooms. It's it's pretty pretty decent. And I, I think it's just a matter of you want to be as high as possible if you have a, a water view room. So now we're gonna move into the club level and this is, we're gonna start with the uh, deluxe suite and they are they start on the third floor. So you can see right here, they start on the third floor on the Port Cashier side, so the standard side, and there's only two, but then when you go up one floor, there's actually four and this is how it is the rest of the way up. So as you can see, there are two different layouts. I will post links to room tours of each of these layouts to see which one better suits your family. I think for the most part, they are very similar, but if it were my family and looking at the setup, I would much prefer the L side. It just really gives you more of a privacy and more, I like more definition. Plus you'd be on the, the side of the water. So I would request the um, even side. So the even numbers, which is the Lago Dorado side or the water, the water side. And then as you can see, the 15th floor is where the club level is. And Kronos Club is the club level. So 
I would request being on the 15th floor on the even side or the Lago Dorado side. So 9536 or 9550 would be the two rooms that I would request because one, you have this beautiful view of the water and then you'd be right near the Kronos Club. Obviously, um, I would probably still prefer to be in the Lago Dorado side on a lower floor than I would rather than being in one of these rooms um, just to have that water view. And I know we would prefer this setup more. So it really depends on your family. You just have to decide when you're making your request and you're filling it out, what's more important, being on the 15th floor or trying to get on the 15th floor or the layout. And then make sure you're clear about that in the notes section of your room requests so that the room assigner knows which one is most important to you and what you're looking for. Next up is the Club Access one bedroom and there are four of them. And this is an interesting one because there are none on the 15th floor and they all uh, face the Port Cashier side. So you're gonna face the side the standard of the parking lot. So really, I don't think you're going to go wrong. You can request a higher floor, maybe 14. But as you can see, they're all pretty much the same location, just a different layout. And then one is on the, there's two on the 12th floor and two on the 14th floor. So I think for here, it really doesn't really make a difference as to which one request. Just I would, I would probably request the 14th floor just because again, the higher up, the better. And finally, we're going to go to the presidential suite. And there are actually two. And as you can see, one is on the Port Cashier side, and then the other is on the Lago Dorado side. Now, even if fireworks have returned, I would request the side of the Lago um, Dorado, mainly because it's if you want to go watch fireworks, you can just walk across the hall to the Kronos Club and watch the fireworks from the club because it's literally across the hallway to your room. Um, I don't think you can go wrong with either one of these. I mean, if you can afford a presidential suite, I don't think they're going to give you a bad room, but either one of these are going to be fine. And it's really going to be which one is available when you check in. But if it were my choice, I would request the, the one on the side of the Lago Dorado, which is 95. Four, eight. So now we're on my dashboard and we are going to configure my room requests, but first we got to find the room. So we're going to click on to Disney's Coronado that will bring us back to the map. I'm going to go down here and let's say we are on a water view to queen beds. Show matching rooms and I'm going to request that building five that I requested before that I mentioned. And I'm in, this one looks like it's the closest to the walkway. So I'm going to click on here. And that is room 5110. And obviously it's taking a little bit of time. There we go. Um, so this is obviously before they put the bridges on, but this would be very, very close to the sidewalk. This is definitely where we want to request. So I'm going to click here to make a request for your room for my sample trip. And it's going to bring in, it's going to pop up that room, which is 5110. So now it's, it's popped up. But again, you're not done. You got to configure the room request. And there it's entered in. I would input my reservation number that's necessary for the room request to be faxed or to be sent is that they need your reservation number. That's prompted in my fake email. And then it don't change this as I've mentioned before in other videos, never change this. This will tell the room assigners the basic general area of what you're looking for. So I'm gonna put here building five and uh, building five, ground floor, and let's say close to bridge. So now they know I wanna be in building five on the ground floor and close to the bridge. So now they have an idea and I've saved and now 30 days before my trip, this will be sent off to Disney and the room assigners will know exactly what I'm looking for. So just to recap, there are no unicorn rooms at Disney's Coronado Springs Resort. There's really no worst rooms. I would say rooms to avoid or areas to avoid is the ranchos. I would not recommend this area because you don't want to end up in building 6A or 7A. Um, if you want to be close to the gym or close to the everything, building five is where I would request if you were in standard or even water view. Um, if you want to be close to the pool, 8A, if you want to be close to Grandestino without being in Grandestino 8C. Um, obviously, suites, I went over those. And then Grandestino, the higher the better. So there you have it. Those are my best and worst rooms at Disney's Coronado Springs Resort. So there you have it. Those are the best and worst rooms at Disney's Coronado Springs Resort. I do want to give a shout out to my friend, Jeremy Stein, who helped me with this. 
Um, Coronado Springs was the resort that my husband and I stayed at a lot before our son was born. When we would go there, we had stayed at a couple of values, but when we would go, we would try and stay at a moderate and Coronado Springs was our moderate of choice. And we just, we loved it. It was, it was just, it kind of fit our groove. Um, we haven't been there since our son was born. So we haven't been there in over five years. And I've, I've attended an event there, but I haven't stayed there. So I reached out to Jeremy. He is one of the hosts, um, him and his wife host the podcast Main Street Magic. Uh, I listened to him and then we became friends on Facebook and we've met in person and he is just, him and his wife and their kids are just amazing family. If you listen to podcasts, definitely look up Main Street Magic. But anyway, I wanted to give a shout out to Jeremy because he really helped me. He has stayed at Coronado Springs <laughs> I think more than anybody, he knows, I mean, the staff, the cast members know him. That's how much. And when they reopened, he was there the first day they reopened after the NBA left. So he's a huge fan. He was actually, when I asked him, he's like, oh, we're leaving to, we're gonna be staying at Grand Destino tomorrow. So they stay there a lot. Um, he gave me a lot of tips and kind of gave me ideas of which sections he, he likes. And he was the one that told me that standard view uh, at Grand Destino is the ones that can see the fireworks. So um, shout out to him, listen to his podcast, and then check out Touring Plans. If you're gonna make a room, room request, use touringplans.com. It is a subscription service, worth the money. If you watch my other videos, you get it. There you go. Um, if you like this video, click like, click and subscribe. That way you get a notification every time I post a new video. Bye everyone.